but in this video we're going to be discussing the basics of right triangles starting with the fact that every right triangle has a 90 degree angle okay so this would be an example of a right triangle over here of course uh, we refer to the two non-longest uh, sides as the legs legs okay so it has two legs and we refer to the longest side of course is the hypotenuse the hypotenuse okay so and we often give these side letters so we tend to give like A and B to the legs while C gets the longest side you also see sometimes X Y and Z or Z would maybe get the hypotenuse okay and I think it's worth our time to already comment on the two acute angles in this triangle because of course if you're familiar with triangles which you probably are if you're looking at this video uh, all the angles sum up to 180 degrees and if 90 of them happen to be right there then the other 90 must be made up from the other two acute angles so it is fair to say this if we were to say like theta theta here and alpha are two angles it is fair to say that in every right triangle theta plus alpha or the sum of the two acute angles must be 90 degrees in other words the two acute angles in a right triangle are complementary angles okay that being said uh, we can go ahead and start by looking at the famous theorem the Pythagorean theorem that we often use with right triangles now you might be saying I already know the Pythagorean theorem it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared where the sum of the squares of the two legs equal the, the square of the hypotenuse and of course we know this uh, but I think it's worth our time to look at some examples that are more trig-like, or at least involve a little more, more, a little bit more mathematics behind it, or some, some more digging, if you will, before you get to a solution. So let's just say we're going to be solving right triangles quite often. So this might be a particular case that we would examine. What if we had a right triangle in which the hypotenuse was 13 units in length? We can call this short leg x, and we'll call the side x plus 7. Uh, the fact of the matter is we need to find x and uh, we could do this by using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So the first thing setting this up is I would recommend that whenever anybody uses like a formula, I, I tend to, and it's just me, I tend to take all the variables out that I'm plugging in for and write in blanks. So that way when I write these values in, um, like x plus 7 was one of our legs. x plus 7. x was the other leg and we have 13 here. Then I just have to plug those things in. So I think, uh, let's go ahead and mention here again, algebra savvy people, you'll know that x plus 7 squared is not equal to x squared plus 7 squared, okay? Recall that when it comes to something being squared, it means take it times itself. So x plus 7 quantity squared literally means we're going to have to foil out the x plus 7, okay? Oops. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. There we go. And I'll click back on my pen tool. So x plus 7 times x plus 7 here x plus 7 times x plus 7. We'll foil that bad boy out. Plus the x squared that we have there is equal to 169. And of course if we foil this out we get x squared plus 7x plus 7x so plus 14x's and it'll be plus 49. Okay and you can check my math there. Plus the x squared we already have is 169. So when I say this is more trig like it's just more algebra involved. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. We have a few here. We have x squared and x squared. So two total x squareds uh, plus 14 x's plus 49 constants. And this is equal to 169. So you might recall from algebra that uh, this, this is actually a polynomial equation. And the degree is two. In other words, I'm saying we're going to end up with two solutions here. So um, the only reason I mention that is because you can't just kind of isolate x. We're going to have to factor. Okay? And when it comes to factoring, we tend to want to set this side equal to zero. So let's go ahead and subtract 169 from both sides of this. And uh, what we find out is we end up with 2x squared plus 14x. And this is minus 120 is zero. And you might notice that when we factor, the first thing you always check for is the greatest common factor. And I happen to notice that everything, everything on both sides of this equation, share a common factor of 2. And since the right side is 0, I'm going to go ahead and divide this factor of 2 out. So, so this will become x squared now. Uh, this 14 will become 7. So x squared plus 7x. And this will become 60. So minus 60 is 0. So factoring this guy down, um, we have a second degree thing or a quadratic thing. We'll put our x's in front here. Since our leading coefficient is 1, we don't have to build in any other things with our x's. And we need two integers that multiply out to be a negative 60, but some to be a positive 7. And for the sake of time, the first two 
that pop into my mathematical geeky brain happen to be uh, 12, and what would that be? Like uh, 5. 5, let's, ooh, uh, oh, ugly 5. 5, okay, so there we go. Uh, 12 and negative 5 sum to be our positive 7 here, and they multiply out to be our negative 60. So now that we've got this, we can say that, hey, this factor times this factor equals 0. And any time you take two things and multiply them out, you get 0, or any number of things and you get 0, then one of them must have been 0. So now we can set individually each one of those equal to 0. And I guarantee you, you will see problems like this in trig. Okay, so we get 5 and negative 12. And we should label this as units long, even though I didn't use inches or centimeters or meters or whatever, or uh, kilometers. But you look at both of these answers, and you can plug them back in and check them uh, in the Pythagorean theorem, and they both check out. But when you look at the uh, primary example here, which was this triangle over here on the left, uh, we see that positive 5 is really the only reasonable answer. And you'll notice that when you plug 5 in, you get a 5. 5 plus 7 is 12, and a 13, which we know is one of our Pythagorean triples, 5, 12, 13. Okay. So a really good example of how you might use Pythagorean to solve a, a right triangle like that. Um, so let's say, let's say, for example, uh, we have uh, a special set of triangles. We have 30, 60, 90, and we have 45, 45, 90. Okay, and these are two very, very common right triangles. We see these sets of angles all the time. Let's go ahead and sketch them here. But a 30, 60, 90 would look somewhat like that. And a 45, 45, 90, you might already have guessed, is, uh, is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we've got our 45 degree acute angles. I'm going to go ahead and sketch in on this one 30 and 60, and here's our 90. And over here, I'm not going to put in the 45s because we kind of assume we know where those are. Um, but we tend to say that the same relationship exists between these three sides. You heard me mention a Pythagorean triple over here, 5, 12, 13. That's like a special set of numbers. Uh, we could say this. You always look at the, and you might want to write this in your notes if you're taking them, okay? The short side, okay? Always classify the short side first. I always tell my kids, let's pick the short side here on each triangle, and you'll notice that the isosceles, of course, both the legs are short sides. We're going to give it a letter. We'll call it A. You know, A's fun. So A and A, uh, the fact of the matter is this, if you know the short side, then on a 30, 60, 90, it is always the case that the hypotenuse is twice as long as A, or the short side, and that the shorter, or the longer leg is the short side times radical 3. And we tend to just leave that as radical 3 instead of a decimal. And if we know the short side on a 45, 45, 90, this is A radical 2. And radical 2, radical 3, very famous numbers and trig, you see them all the time. And just remember this. The A radical 3 always goes on the 30, 60, 90. I always remember this because it had a 3 in one of its angles. And then A radical 2 is just the other guy over here. So let's take a look at an example where I might use this. Let's say I had a, say a 30, 60, 90 standing up right here. So this would be my 60. This would be our 30. And we have a right angle there. There's 30. Um, and let's say we happen to know that the short side is 5. I just wanted to point out the, the convenience of knowing this because we could determine the other two sides. And I guess we couldn't do that right now because we don't know them. And Pythagoras only works with two knowns and one unknown. So if I knew this was 5 and a 30, 60, 90, well, hey, guess what? I know the short side, and I'm going to call it A. That's, that's what I tend to tell people to do. Because if I can remember that, I know that this hypotenuse is 2A. In other words, 2 times A, and A is 5. This has to be 10, okay? And I know that this side is A radical 3, so whatever A is, which in this case is 5, we'll call it 5, which is the short side, times radical 3. And we got that puppy licked, man. So um, how about we look at kind of a different example? What if we were to have, um, again, again, how about a 30, 60, 90, okay? And here's our, our 60, of course, and our 30, 30 degree angle, and a right angle, okay? So let's say we actually happen to know that this side, the long leg, is 4. Now this tends to throw people because it's not the short side. The short side is down here, here, okay? So I still want to call the short side A. I'm still going to label all my sides. I know this is 2A, okay? I, I should be doing this in, let's say, blue here. A, 2A, and I know that this is A radical 3. But what I know is that A radical 3 is the same thing as, in this case, Four. So if I were to say a radical 3 is the same thing as 4, I say, okay, well, a radical 3, there we go, we fixed that, is equal to 4. We could divide both sides of this. That's a mess, guys. Let me clean that up for you. 
a radical 3 is equal to 4. We'll divide both sides by radical 3 to isolate a, and then we'll know the short side. So these cancel. We got a is equal to 4 over radical 3, or after rationalizing the denominator, we have 4 radical 3 over 3. So now that we've got this guy here, we can actually just substitute that back in up here, and we know that this side is actually twice as long. So if this is four of these radical three over threes, this is going to be eight radical three over three. Okay. So just kind of an example of how knowing the relationships in 30s, 60s, 90s is very, 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 very convenient. Enjoy it.